We're going to start the lesson just discussing basic roots in radicals. The nth root of a number, where n is any counting number, is one of n equal factors whose product is that number. So in this expression here, the k, which is the number underneath the symbol, is called the radicand. The n, the number out front of the radical symbol, written very small, is the index. This indicates the root to be taken. And we look at the whole as the radical or the principal n through. In principle, just means positive. So we're always looking for the positive root unless it tells us to look at the negative as well. Some examples of square roots, cube roots, and fourth roots. Um, you have a blue roots table. So if you're listening to this uh, recording and you don't have that table, please see me. So the square root of A. So let's put in um, a numerical uh, expression up there. So let's look at the square root of 9. Now the square root of 9 is 3, which means that 3 times 3 equals 9. Or I can say 3 squared is 9. We don't write an index of 2 even though that's written, but when you're taking the square root, you want to know what squared gives you 9. Let's look at a cube. So the cube root of 8 is 2, and that's because 2 times itself 3 times is 8, or 2 cubed is 8. And then the fourth root of 16 is also 2 because 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, 4 times, because 3, or 2 times out 3 times was 8, 2 times itself 4 times is therefore going to be 16. So 2 to the 4th power is 16. So in summary, we can take a look at these raising to a 4th power and taking the 4th root as inverse operations. So taking the square root of a number is the inverse of squaring. And taking the cube root is the inverse of cubing. Taking the fourth root is the inverse of raising a number to the fourth power, and so on. So the fifth root is the inverse of raising a number to the fifth power. And the sixth or seventh root is the same as raising a number to the sixth or seventh power. Now, algebraically, to take the eighth, eighth root of x to the b, y to the c, that would be x to the b divided by a, y to the c divided by a. So we divide these exponents by the index out front. So if I look at the example, the cube root of x to the 6, y to the 15th would be x to the 6 divided by 3, y to the 15 divided by 3, which would give us x squared y to the 5th power. So if I want to check, I do the opposite of taking the cube root, which would be to square, or cube rather. So if I do x squared y to the 5th cubed, again the inverse of cube root, just a reminder, when you have power to power, so x to the a raised to the b, we multiply the exponents. So x to the 2 times the 3 would be 6, y to the 5 times the 3 would be 15, which checks. On the back side, we're going to begin simplifying both your perfect roots and non-perfect roots. For non-perfect roots, it's the same setup. We start with our perfect root. And then in the second is the non-perfect root. But breaking it down into the two radicals each time. The issue is just going to be remembering to write the little 3, little the 4 for the cube and fourth roots because we don't typically write the 2 for the square. The note there to the right says you can only have a negative radicand when the index 
is odd. Because the only way to get an odd product, when you start with negative 2 times negative 2, you get a positive 4. When I do negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2, we get negative 8. This is another way of saying negative 2 to the third power is negative 8. So I can only have a negative radicand when we have an odd index. The cube root, our radicand being the negative 8, and our index being 3, which is odd, would therefore be negative 2. And looking at the examples, our directions say to simplify each radical, where all variables represent positive numbers. And above this line, so 1 through 6 are all perfect roots. So we can do our calculator, or use our calculator, for every single one of these questions numerically to get the answer. When you have the plus or minus out front, your answer needs to have the plus or minus. The square root of a fraction is a fraction. Square root of x squared is x. Square root of 4 is 2. Square root of 100 is 10. Square root of x to the 4th. Again, the x1 out front is 2. We just simply divide. x to the 4 divided by 2 is 2. y to the 6 divided by 2 is 3. Notice that once I actually take the square root in this case, there's no longer a radical symbol. Cube root of 8 is 2, and x to the 3 divided by 3 is 1, so just 2x. Cube root, I have a negative radicand, which is okay because the index is on. Cube root of negative 27 is negative 3. x to the first, y to the fifth. For 3 divided by 3 and 15 divided by 3. The fourth root of 16 is 2. x to the 8 divided by 4 is 2. y to the 12 divided by 4 is 3. Because of the negative out front, my answer has to include the negative. The fifth root of 243 is 3. And x to the 5 divided by 5 is 1. Now, for our non- perfect roots. You should start by breaking it down into your two radicals. The first one being the perfect root, whether it be a cube or a fourth or a square or a fifth, and the second being the non-perfect. So four, break it down, break it down, and then x break it down. Now these are both square roots. So I want to look at the perfect squares. Perfect squares are 1 times 1, 1, 2 times 2, 4, 3 times 3, 9, so 16, 25, um, 6 times 6, 36, 49, so on and so forth. The largest perfect square to go into 50 is 25 times 2. And when I'm breaking down x to the third, our perfect squares are x squared, x to the fourth, x to the sixth, x to the eighth, because they have a multiple of 2 for the exponent. So therefore, the smallest one to go into x to the third would be x squared. This has to be x squared times x to get the x cubed. This expression here is going to be brought down into the final answer. So I just need to simplify the front. You first take the square root of 25x squared, which is 5x. That's connected to the 4 by multiplication, so I find the product. So give me the final answer of 20x radical 2x. Largest perfect square to win 48 is 16. 16 times 3. x to the fourth it has an even exponent, so it's a perfect square. But then y to the fifth, I break down is y to the fourth times y, because y, or, uh, y to the sixth is too big, and that's our next perfect square. Now I have x times square root of 16x to the fourth. y to the fourth is 4x squared y squared, which will give me 4x cubed y squared. And I just bring down that radical. 3y. 
Now we need to focus on our cubes, okay? Our perfect cubes numerically. 1 times 1 times 1 is 1. 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. 3 times 3 times 3 is 27, and so on. So when I look at the first one, bring down the 2, I'm going to break down the cube root of 40. Largest perfect cube that goes into 40 is 8, and that's 8 times 5. So I take the cube root of 8, which is 2, times the 2 out front to get 4 cube root of 5. The second term always just gets brought down into our answer. Now, 125. 125 is a perfect cube. And you notice the radicand 125 is negative, and that's okay because we have an odd index. So I'm going to break it down into my cubes. And the only thing I'm really worried about taking the cube root or breaking down, since 125 is a perfect cube, is that x to the 7th. So putting the negative 125 up front, because that is the perfect cube. Now, perfect cubes algebraically are x cubed, x6, x9, x12, and so on, because the exponent has to be a multiple of 3. So the multiple of 3 that comes just before 7 is x to the 6, so therefore times x. And the final answer here, cube root of negative 125 is negative 5. You can always do that on a calculator. x to the 6 divided by 3 is 2, and then we bring down the cube root of x. You want to leave some space in between the coefficient out front and the radical, otherwise it'll look like negative 5 x to the 23rd square root of x. Now to finish, we're going to do some fourth roots and some fifth roots. When I'm looking at fourths, or perfect fourths, those numbers would be 1 times 1 times 1 times 1. 4 times is 1. 2 to the fourth power is 16. 3 to the fourth power 81, 4 to the 4th power, 256. The largest 4th to go into 32, or if I, that I can divide 32 by, is 16 times 2. Algebraically, that would be x to the 4th, x to the 8th, x to the 12th, as it has to be a multiple of 4 for the exponent. And the multiple of 4 that comes just before 7 would be x to the 4th, so that would be x cubed to d multiply to x to the 7th, and then y to the 4th is a perfect 4th. So the 4th root of that expression would be 2xy, and then we bring down the 4th root of 2x cubed. Last one, our fifths. So our perfect fifths, 1 to the 5th power is 1, 2 to the 5th power is 32, uh, which is a perfect fifth, so I can stop there. So I'm going to break it down into the perfect fifths, non-perfect fifths, 32 is any, again, exponents, and I'm looking at perfect fifths algebraically, that's going to be x to the fifth, x to the tenth, x to the fifteenth, so on and so forth. The exponent has to be a multiple of five. So x to the fifth comes here. Breaking down y to the sixth, that would be y to the fifth, y z to the 7th be z to the 5th, z squared. As x to the 5th goes into both, or y to the 5th goes into y to the 6th, z to the 5th goes into z to the 7th, because the exponent of 10 is too big. So 5th root of 32 is 2. 5th root of x to the 5th is x. Same with y and z, because they're all the 5th power. And I bring down the 5th root of yz squared.